months, can be insured or moved off when it's switched off.
Wales and that's because that was the only option in their area where their family lived, where their mum lived. And ever since then, uh, irrespective of who's controlled the council, there has been as it were, a mixed economy of belief, recognising it's got to be third sector, private sector, and public sector, if we're to meet the housing needs and aspirations of the city. But those two things were very definitely started uh, by, um, by Sir Trevor. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, just uh, could I say on behalf of Councillor Makinson, uh, he'd like me to thank you all for the lovely emails, messages and cards he's got from all the sides of the council. He was just recovering, if you can do, from his mum dying uh, when he's been stricken with a chicken box. Uh, not a good thing for four months, so he's in isolation, which is why he isn't here to make these things today. So, Thank you for allowing me to make these comments on all about Sir Trevor Jones and uh, please accept those thanks from Council Lane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm going to just very, very quickly from me. On many occasions, um, both myself and uh, Sir Trevor have differences uh, of opinion uh, around politics. But I have to say that from my point of view, as a, uh, a leader and as a councillor, he uh, only wished the very best for the city of Liverpool. And so uh, the political dis disagreements will remain uh, private. And I will remember him for what he was, somebody that committed his life uh, not only to business but also to help in the city in the best way he could. I think he and Chloe. Uh, need to be uh, remembered for that. I spoke to her, uh, passed on my condolences, and I will uh, attend the uh, funeral which she's asked me to speak at, and I'm grateful uh, for her for doing that. And I will, of course, speak. But I like fond memories of him, uh, of course, around um, how he, uh, in my view, was the uh, person that introduced it to like pagan politics into uh, local politics and somebody that exploited that. And indeed, it's pointed the trick of the matter has been moved around from alley to alley uh, around the city. Well, from the day story, uh, that did that, that. But nevertheless, Trevor was somebody that, as I said, I looked up to because he was totally committed to the city of Liverpool. So we will sadly uh, miss him. And as I say, our condolences to the, to the whole family from, and on behalf of the whole city and the council. Thank you. I think on these occasions it's something, sometimes worth remembering that there is far more that unites us than divides us. Um, and I would agree with um, Mayor Anderson that um, very often we would disagree on how we got there, but I think we all have the best interests of Liverpool at heart, as sure as the Trevor did. Um, Chief Executive, if there is no interest. So, oh, sorry. Forgive me. housing action areas, um, but I think it's also fair to say a lot of people might not forget that many years Trevor Jones was in the council, he was being a minority council, and he actually had to balance uh, quite contrasting views between the other uh, two major parties who were present at the time, and that often meant that some of the reforms he wanted to do, he wasn't able to do, but got the blame for um, I think the other thing I think, uh, he was very, very pronounced. He, he actually would say quite proudly, he actually supported really great pushes for home ownership and encouraging home ownership and um, people buying their own council properties even before it became government policy before Thatcher. He, he often jokes that uh, Mr. Thatcher turned, turned to trigger off him. And I think actually in the northern cities it actually has been incredibly successful. Some of the estates where large numbers of people do buy their properties really, really benefited. Like your own work, I dare say that. Um, benefited from people having the opportunity to, to take possession, take some control. And it was very interesting during that period. A lot of the residents and tenants associations, which were previously tenant associations, it was often that home, home owners were very much a high driving force of change and cohesion. And they didn't want to see themselves as tenants and owner occupiers, but they actually were the people with the initiative and the enthusiasm to drive benefits for the whole estate, including tenants. So I think that needs to be said. I think it also needs to be said that he actually saw um, the dangers of just raising, raising, raising council taxes at phenomenal rates, 
where people who were on low incomes were disproportionately penalised and put into a poverty trap. And I think this is by general this kind of interface as well, that trade-off between doing so. But I think the most unique thing about him is, is I would remember when we had a personal dignity, or any person, irrespective of their party politics, uh, was having some personal challenges. He actually went out of the way. His actual being a gentleman above party politics was something I will remember him for. I know we fiercely disagreed about him leaving for the Social Democrats, um, but he respected other people's views far more than others. There was no bullying, there was no threatening. He actually respected people having different views. And I think in some ways I really do hope uh, some of that tradition will lay on this council. Uh, that support for devolution and also respect in other people, even if how much you scream. I know Mayor Anson touched on that. And uh, I really hope uh, uh, you'll be moving our prayers. Uh, it must be a very difficult time for it because they were a duo in every single sense. Councillor Crowe. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just on behalf of the Green Party, we'd really like to extend our congratulations to Councillor Harrison. Wish her another happy marriage, and to Councillor Moore and Councillor Nathanson, uh, our sincere condolences on your recent losses. Um, regarding the death of Trevor, Trevor Jones, uh, obviously I'm a bit of a political newcomer to uh, sort of experience him at his peak, but for reading the tributes in the Echo and elsewhere, it's clear that Liverpool has lost one of its um, sort of political greats. And um, he was a, seems to have been a real character, a real by passion for this community and an ability to connect with people and win their confidence. And I think his story is just a reminder of the importance of this institution we're involved with and how important it is for the well-being of our community. So, um, yes, our thoughts and condolences are all with his family. Thank you very much. Um, Chief Executive. Declarations of interest, Lord Mayor. I remind the members that you are only required to declare meetings to any disclosable, pecuniary, or prejudicial interest, in which case the member will need to leave the chamber during the consideration of the item. Are there any such declarations, please? Um, yes, Commander, just please, item 14, by virtue of employment. Thank you. Any more? Minutes of the City Council meeting held on the 20th of July agreed then. Agreed. Chief Executive. Petition and statements, Lord Mayor. Can I advise Council that two statements have been received at the evening's meeting? The first is received from Kathy Fitzgerald to her in relation to item 12 on the agenda. Can I invite Kathy to address the Council, please?
A sub-trust report showed that less than 3% of entrants to grammar schools are entitled to free school meals. Compare that to my school, also High. 1,700 students on roll and approximately 63% are eligible for free school meals. <coughs> we know that grammar schools favour the better off because they can afford to get private tuition for their children in order to pass the entrance exams. This policy will not help social mobility. It will entren entrench inequality and disadvantage. The lucky few that can afford the tuition will get ahead and the disadvantage will be left behind. I'm also confused as to how the method of selection will take place. As Justin Greening has said, a diverse modern education system would not return to the wholesale 11 plus exams. So how will they select? And what will happen to the tables? How can schools like mine be judged on a par with grammar schools? I passed the 11 plus and went to Liverpool Girls College Grammar School. I left with two other levels and two CSEs. Obviously, not one of their success stories. And maybe that is why I'm a passionate believer in the comprehensive education system. Let's have a good local school for every child. And for best use of taxpayers' money, let those schools be local authority schools, not academies or free schools. This proposal was not in the Tory manifesto. Let's fight it to ensure that all children are given the same educational opportunities and not made to feel like a failure at the age of 11. Without elevating any councillors to the corridors of Westminster, <coughs> I would like to thank Council for inviting me to speak and pledge the Liverpool NUT support for this motion. Thank you.
It's important to stress that we're a peaceful group. We welcome anyone to all of our Facebook group and our actions to date in order to verify that. We also respect people's positions, whatever they are. Ever since Hillsborough and their hateful headline, sales of the pay for the local slumped. In 1989, approximately 55,000 copies a day were sold. Six months ago, that figure was less than 5,000. Our information is the campaign has resulted in that figure dropping by to 40%. The taxi drivers in the city have been hugely supportive and influential for our campaign. Apart from displaying stickers asking people not to leave the sun in their cab, they've been into petrol stations who sell and told them they're going to take the business elsewhere. They can spend 150 to 200 pound a week each, and the petrol station might sell five copies a day. You can see it's not a difficult decision. More recently, we've got hackney cabs who put a full livery on their cabs, saying the Sun newspaper is not welcome in our city, and asking people not to buy it. Six more cabs will roll onto the streets over the next few days. One interesting angle for this audience today is the success we've had in protesting and picketing outside superstores. Approximately 30 members protested outside Morrison's and Speak. At the front door, members asked the public to sign a petition requesting that the store see sell the Sun. Almost 100% of customers signed. Approximately 12 of the members went to the entrance of the petrol station asking customers to turn away to another local petrol station who didn't sell the paper. Over two hours, we turned away over 90% of approximately 240 vehicles. We repeated the action at Sainsbury's and then turned to do more. Interestingly, another great help we believe in dealing with the Morrison's issue was that the staff inside, who were very supportive of us, Inform the manager they raised a collective agreement about the issue. Morrison stopped selling the sub later that week after we confirmed we would visit again the following weekend. We have had people tell us this happened a long time ago. There's a different editor now. This, for those people, is somehow a reason why we should be more accepting of the paper. Well, we know that it took 27 years for the families and the people of Liverpool to find the real truth, and this paper is a significant. It's ironic that this should be used as a reason not to boycott it, and it's a view we don't accept. We don't think it belongs on the shelf in our city. This campaign is for the total eclipse of the sun, starting in Liverpool, spreading further. We've been accused of denying choice, even censorship. This is ridiculous. All we do is politely ask news agents not to sell. It's suggested that we damage small business, but it's also not true. People just change to a different paper. There is little loyalty from the few people who buy it, and there is no loss of trade. There is, however, an increase in business from people who switch away from shops who still sell. You all know about the significant recent success of Mersey Travel uh, when the unanimous motion was passed to ask vendors on the network to stop selling the sun. We're being asked from people from other parts of the country if they can get involved. We have news agents supporting us in Strabane, Northern Ireland, Inverness, Isle of Man, and members of the wider public ask us to help them in other cities. Leeds, for example, where I now live. Uh, and the same motion that you will hear tonight is being presented to Straban and Derry Council today to be debated at the next council meeting. Here today, we ask you to support the motion. We also ask you to join our Facebook group, Total Eclipse of the Sun. Thank you for the time this morning.
resilience. We will uh, never give up uh, attacking those who attacked our city and attacked the 96 and their families. And to those from outside our city that look at our city and question why uh, people like uh, you and others that have joined the campaign for the total eclipse of the sun, when they ask the questions why, what I would say to them is just simply remember this, that we've clearly established the fact that there was an establishment cover up uh, by those uh, that wanted to shift blame onto others, uh, the 96, uh, and other people who survived uh, Hillsborough. There was a clear, deliberate attempt to shift the blame to those people. And the reason why Liverpool was labelled uh, self pity city, and also the fact that the 96 were labelled as pilferers, uh, as liars, as drunks, as people who caused the death of themselves and others, was because of the headlines that was printed on the pages of the Sun. Now, no excuse can take that fact away, none whatsoever. And neither can a merely mouth apology, because this city and the families of the 96 have suffered for 27 years. And if I had my way, and this council could legally do it, I would ban not only the sun from Liverpool, but also the city region and everywhere where it is sold. It is a disgrace of a newspaper, always has been and always will be. But in terms of what it did to this city, to the families of the 96 and to those that died, they will never, ever be forgiven and neither will Cal Calvin McKenzie. So, as far as we're concerned, we support your campaign 110%, always have and always will. Thank you. Um, I support urgent key decisions, executive decisions, Mayor Anderson. Yes, Lord, Lord Mayor, just to actually uh, move uh, that the item, uh, I think, page 34 on, on the agenda. Questions? Can we note the report then? Is that agreed? Okay. Uh, item 5, Mayor of the Pool announcements and updates. Mayor Anderson. Well, very really, uh, brief. Um, the motion that I have uh, tabled tonight on the LGA uh, and around uh, the funded uh, reductions to Liverpool are just basically what I want to touch on, on the announcements. We are uh, now uh, coming towards the end of our three year uh, budget um, plans, if you like, which we agreed uh, in our uh, financial plan and our budget uh, statement uh, two and a half years ago. <coughs> So as we head towards uh, April, we are engaged in uh, discussions and debates with uh, council directors, with the treasurer, with the chief executive, with yourself and cabinet members to look at uh, the savings that we need to find. We have uh, 30 million uh, pounds a year uh, for how we are, how we change that to front loaded or, or, or not. But we've got 90 million pounds to find uh, over three years. So we will be engaging. Uh, in that debate and discussions, and obviously uh, the uh, opposition parties uh, will be made uh, aware of the options, and we will consult with the public as well about some of the options and some of the choices uh, that we uh, have before us. And we will engage with the public to help us see if we can make uh, some of those decisions uh, more palatable. Uh, but also, uh, we would welcome their views and insight and input into. Um, what we have to face really in terms of those 90 million trucks. I just want to make one more comment uh, around some of the headlines that were in the uh, local press but also uh, in the national press about the challenges that the National Health Service uh, faces in, in particular in Liverpool but also uh, the Liverpool City region. And I just want to make this absolutely clear in relation to uh, the women's uh, hospital is that Liverpool uh, City Council will not uh, allow uh, the closure of the women's hospital without the opening of uh, women's hospital somewhere else. 
or investment to take place in that current site. We will fight uh, to the nail for more investment into the National Health Service in Liverpool and the Liverpool City region. But we will campaign uh, really hard to make sure that we retain uh, the Women's Hospital. The fact of the matter is, is the SCPs uh, that have been discussed and announced and debated uh, are, in my view, an attempt to actually save money uh, and to actually cut money from services within Liverpool and the city region. However, they also do provide us uh, with opportunities to do things and do things differently. And what I uh, will pledge to the public here that we will, in this uh, administration and with others across the whole city, the leaders across uh, other councils, uh, across the city region and beyond who use the women's, that we will protect and fight for the retention of the women's hospital, but also, if it's not on that particular site, that we'll fight to have a women's hospital specifically designated for women, supporting women in Liverpool and the wider city region. And I just wanted to uh, make that particular uh, comment a little bit. Um, item 6, change the committee membership and appointment to Councillor Hath and Councillor Nicholas. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I ask to move the changes to the committee membership appointments and outside bodies as attached to this note at Appendix A and the additional changes circulated around the chamber be approved, please? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. And again, Natalie, on item 7, Constitution Issues. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I ask to move the terms of reference to appointments and disciplinary panel be amended in line with relevant legislation as attached to this note as Appendix B be approved, please? Is that agreed? Agreed. It's going so well. Um, item 8, consultation responses concerning the review of the Special Community of Impact Policies for Allerton Road, Lot Lane, Roblox and Cavan Quarter. Councillor Christine Banks. Lord Mayor, in the absence of Councillor Banks, can I move that the recommendation of the Licensing and Government Committee held on the 27th of July be approved? Councillor Penn. I'd just like to thank the Licensing Committee for this piece of work. It was a consultation which was well conducted, uh, which got a lot of responses, certainly from my and very accurately reflects what local people want. So I'd just like to pass on uh, those thanks to all those concerned, because it was uh, a really excellent thing, and I'm in absolutely delighted with the results of it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, the the particular area in question here. Really, really welcome the fact that so many members of the public and the local residents were actually invited to join in those as well as councils and businesses. I think it's a great outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, so, item is that approved? Agreed. Right, on to motions. Uh, can I remind members in terms of time and speech, as the mover of the motion gets five minutes and has the right to reply, which again is five minutes. All of the speakers, three minutes and two minutes for extensions, if agreed by the council. So we go on to the um, Local Women's Association motion by Major Mayor Joe Anderson OBE. Can I invite Mayor Anderson to move the motion standing in his name, please? Okay, move the uh, motion in my name, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, there are two amendments um, to this proposed. Uh, the uh, first amendment uh, by the Greens, uh, I reject. Second amendment by Councillor Kent, I accept. Um, and the reason why I reject the Greens is I don't see any difference between what I've said and what the author of the administration would do. But in, in relation to the motion, uh, Lord Mayor, it is a, a simple fact that uh, we are um, now uh, edging closer and closer to a stage where the funding for the city uh, is so perilous that uh, we have very uh, little choice but to cut even further into services, as I've just uh, pointed out in my uh, mail announcements, to save uh, 90 million over the, the next three years. I think the reason why I criticise uh, the LTA, I think 
people, uh, uh, certainly in my group, told that I'm not a, an LGA fan. Um, and this is what you waste space. Um, but nevertheless, it, it represents, uh, or supposedly represents, uh, local authorities uh, up and down the country, whether the shire counties, towns, cities, or, or whoever. And I, I was always of the view that the uh, local government association was set up to, if you like, espouse the values and the principles that we all hold dear, that is fairness and equality. And clearly, that isn't the case because what the LGA has sat on, or been very uh, benign in terms of making any condemnation or criticism of uh, the uh, previous government uh, as a coalition, or indeed uh, this uh, government, is to actually challenge the fairness of the funds and allocation, which of course results in the likes of Liverpool and uh, other cities, uh, because we stick to the archaic and outdated uh, fund and formula of the bars uh, formula, it means uh, that cities like Liverpool one of the borders in, in the country is punished harder than, uh, for instance, um, you know, Oxfordshire, West Oxfordshire, or any, a, 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 anywhere else. And that just surely cannot be accepted. Now, the reason why it is is because the LGA don't want to rock the boat because they have um, members from the shires and uh, other areas who are affluent and doing quite well. In fact, they represent some councils that are actually better off as a result of the funding uh, allocations and the funding cuts that governments introduce. Well, that is simply uh, not good enough and simply uh, not acceptable either. And that's why I've raised it here. I want to see if uh, our, my LTA uh, colleagues who participate in the LTA discussions, debates, and uh, with back seminars or whatever to actually raise. Uh, this issue with the uh, counterparts in other uh, cities and actually start to raise the profile through the LDA of the challenges that not just Liverpool but other uh, cities faces. So that's the reason why the motion is there. I uh, do um, accept Councillor Kemp's amendment because he rightly uh, raises some important issues about why uh, there is a need for the LDA to look at itself and commission a report into how it can change what is, as I say, simply uh, not acceptable in 2016. That uh, organisations that we pay handsomely into is supposedly support, supposed to be representative of all, yet seems to be uh, going to hide whenever this issue is raised. So I'll be raising it with core cities. I'll be asking the core cities uh, uh, leaders to support it, but I also think that we need to campaign to make sure that the LTA uh, understands that no longer will we accept uh, them being used on, on this particular issue. Committed to being delivered 
as well and as cheaply as possible. But there are limits. Um, it's very important that we take up the issue. I mean, I think there's several issues. One the relationship between Liverpool and other cities, you know, between the core cities and other regions. I think we also need to make a point, and the LJ needs to make a point, about local government versus other services. Um, if other public services had delivered the kind of efficiencies that local government has got, we'd have a lot more money available to spend ourselves, and I think we have some lessons to teach them. The third point is, this is raised by another motion from Councillors Mitchell and Kushner. We do need to reach the broader public and go outside the city and campaign. It's very easy for us to, uh, and we've got a good excuse, let's face it, to be a bit managerial about this, because we're under such enormous pressures, just coping with the pressures we've got, can mean that communication you know, can, can fall away. We need to involve other people in the decision-making process. In my own small way, I try to take to my select committee to report on some of the budget challenges we face and invite comments from other colleagues. I think that is important, and I do think it's important that we don't accept that it's business as usual. I think that other parties on the council do have a contribution to make to this, to promoting a more civilised and sensible debate with the city. But at the end of the day, we have to be prepared to go out and tell the rest of the country this is not fair. You just can't go on treating us. And other cities in the same position like this. And we won the argument in Liverpool, um, but you can't survive on your own. As, as we made point in the, in the recent EU referendum, we need to be with other people. So I think this is the right way forward, and we need to make the case for the rest of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. Um, Councillor Crone, you've got an amendment here. Is it seconded? Can I ask you to read your motion? Your amendment, sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, obviously, it's already been indicated that my um, amendment is going to be rejected out of hand. But the reason we put it forward is it felt, it felt to us like the motion was doing two things. It was having a go at the LGA on one hand and asking the LGA to lobby for us on the other hand. So we just thought, if you want them to be an ally with us against the central government, perhaps we should use diplomatic language. Obviously, that's the reason we put the motion forward. We think it'd be a better motion with some of those terms removed. And just to add that we'll be supporting Councillor Kent's amendment too, so it's got lots of useful uh, practical suggestions. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Dalton. The main motion and um, opposing amendments. And I think, I think the dilemma is actually subject, uh, in the words of Councillor Kent, it's about being diplomatic. I think the problem is the LGA has bent over so backwards to be diplomatic to government. It means